Am I accountable for not obtaining gifts for the child of my former partner? The intricacy of our situation stems from the shared custody of our 16-year-old son and the intricate dynamics established after our separation six years ago. This split was catalyzed by my ex's infidelity, which led to him fathering a child with another woman. Following our divorce, we made an attempt to reconcile, albeit briefly before deciding to part ways once more. Presently, my ex and his current partner remain in a relationship, though its stability is often marred by financial strain and interpersonal conflict. Their daughter, now six years old, has inevitably been affected by the instability within their household. Despite my disengagement from her life due to the circumstances surrounding her birth, I have refrained from actively fostering a relationship between her and my son. The challenges of the past year have compounded matters, with my ex grappling with significant financial burdens, leaving little room for extravagant gift-giving or frivolous expenses. On the occasion of their daughter's recent birthday, it was customary for my ex's parents to undertake the task of gift-giving for my son. However, they failed to extend this gesture to their granddaughter. Subsequently, my ex reached out to me, suggesting that I contribute to purchasing gifts for her. Despite my reservations, he persisted asserting that it was my responsibility as her brother's mother to do so. Upon learning that his daughter received minimal gifts, my ex assigned blame to me, insinuating that my failure to procure gifts had contributed to her disappointment. When confiding in a friend about the situation, I was met with the suggestion that my ex's daughter may harbor feelings of neglect compared to her half-siblings, exacerbating her sense of being unwanted. Confronted with these accusations, I find myself grappling with the question of accountability. While I maintain that my actions were justified given the circumstances, I recognize the importance of exploring alternative perspectives and gaining deeper insights into my role within this intricate familial dynamic. I find myself more inclined to place a greater share of the responsibility on my ex-partner, given that the dissolution of our marriage stemmed from his betrayal through infidelity. It raises the question, why isn't he taking the initiative to purchase a gift for our son to present to his half-sibling? Typically, isn't it the parent of the child who cheated who should handle such matters, rather than expecting the betrayed party to shoulder the burden? After all, the child is innocent in this situation, yet that doesn't automatically translate to an obligation on my part to provide gifts. Speaking of the custody arrangement, while we previously shared custody, there has been a noticeable decline in the time my son spends with his father over the past year. It's worth considering whether my son's desire to give his half-sister a holiday gift should be guided by his own sense of responsibility as an older sibling, rather than feeling coerced by his father's expectations. While I don't feel obligated to finance such a gift, I do recognize the value in assisting my son in selecting a thoughtful and age-appropriate present, which could serve as a meaningful bonding opportunity between us. This gesture acknowledges the innocence of the child without diminishing the shared pain my son and I have experienced as a result of the entire situation. In reflecting on the situation, it becomes increasingly apparent that the burden of responsibility should not fall on my shoulders alone. Furthermore, drawing from personal family experiences, it underscores the importance of instilling responsible financial habits and setting appropriate boundaries. It wouldn't be surprising if my ex were to seek financial assistance from our son in the future, once he achieves financial stability. Therefore, it's essential to prepare my son to navigate such situations with clarity and confidence. When my ex attempted to assign blame to me for not purchasing a gift for his daughter as her brother's mother, it only served to highlight his sense of entitlement. While the child may be innocent and deserving of empathy, it's important to recognize that she has no direct connection to me and therefore, my obligations toward her should not exceed those of any other child facing hardship. The audacity of my ex in expecting me to finance gifts for his affair child's birthday is a testament to his misplaced entitlement and disregard for boundaries. The episode unraveled a few weeks back, shedding light on a profound dilemma. Am I the a-hole for demanding my ex return my family baby blanket after learning the truth? At 27, I found myself in the unexpected revelation that the baby girl I believed to be mine actually has another father. It all came to light when I stumbled upon images of her with my ex-girlfriend of five years. A man reached out to me, claiming involvement with her and unaware of her relationship status. After a paternity test, 
It was unequivocally established that I'm not her biological father. Consequently, my ex relocated from our shared apartment, taking our child with her to reside with her mother. The gravity of the situation deepened when I realized that my great-grandma's meticulously crafted baby blanket, a cherished family heirloom passed down through generations, was nowhere to be found. This blanket holds profound sentimental value, traditionally bestowed upon each newborn in our family, and I intended to continue this tradition with my own offspring. Driven by a sense of duty to preserve this familial legacy, I confronted my ex at her mother's residence, adamant about reclaiming the blanket. I underscored its significance and my desire to preserve it for my future children. However, my ex contested, asserting that it was gifted to our daughter and hence exempt from return. My stance remained unwavering. This blanket was earmarked for a child I was misled into believing was mine. With the dissolution of our relationship and my newfound awareness of the truth, neither my ex nor the child maintains a familial bond with me. Thus, I implored for the blanket's return stressing its rightful place within my family's heritage. After a tense exchange, my ex relented, surrendering the blanket to me. However, the ordeal didn't conclude there. The subsequent day saw her mother resorting to social media, falsely accusing me of theft. Despite rallying support from most of our mutual acquaintances, dissenting voices linger, criticizing my insistence on reclaiming the blanket. Yet, the crux of the matter remains undiminished, the blanket symbolizes my family's lineage, serving as a custodian of our generational legacy. It was never mine to relinquish, and my ex's failure to acknowledge its significance underscores a lack of respect for our shared heritage. Therefore, in asserting my right to reclaim the blanket, I refused to be painted as the antagonist in this narrative. Instead, I upheld the values of familial integrity and heritage preservation, safeguarding a cherished artifact for the benefit of future generations. She deceived me into believing I was the father, leading my family to develop an attachment to a child who wasn't mine. Now, I'm grappling with the aftermath of her deceit. Those who are siding with her fail to grasp the gravity of her actions, reducing my predicament to a mere blanket issue. However, this blanket holds profound familial significance, and reclaiming it serves as a necessary step in distancing myself from her deception. Moving on to the next tale, am I the a-hole for labeling my mother-in-law as irrational and ejecting her from my husband's abode because she essentially wants him to abandon me? My husband and I recently welcomed a beautiful baby girl into the world. His mother, a self-made entrepreneur, used to inspire me. However, her demeanor shifted when we announced our pregnancy. While his father expressed joy and anticipation at becoming a grandfather, his mother's reaction was starkly different. She immediately questioned our plans and suggested termination, expressing concern that a baby would hinder our career aspirations. Despite our assurances of having a well-thought-out plan, she remained skeptical. Fast forward to a few days ago, she proposed an unsettling experiment, I would become a stay-at-home mom for the remainder of the year. This suggestion was not only intrusive but also undermined our carefully crafted plans and my personal autonomy. Her insistence on dictating our life choices and disregarding our autonomy reached a tipping point. In confronting her about her unreasonable demands, I referred to her behavior as crazy and demanded her departure from our household. While she may have achieved success in her own right, her attempts to impose her beliefs onto our lives are unwelcome and unacceptable. Our decisions regarding parenthood and career trajectories are ours alone to make, and her interference crosses a boundary that cannot be tolerated. Proposing a rotational living arrangement for my husband, where he could alternate between our home and his parents, seemed like a sensible compromise to ensure he could recuperate after demanding work or school days while still maintaining contact with us on weekends if he so desired. However, I was taken aback by his mother's vehement opposition to this proposal, as she adamantly asserted that he bore no obligation towards our daughter. In her view, I had imposed the consequences of an unplanned pregnancy on him alone, suggesting that I should assume sole responsibility for our child and implying that our marriage might inevitably suffer as a result. Her audacious suggestion left me speechless, prompting me to swiftly escort her out of our home, rejecting her proposal as both ludicrous and deeply hurtful. Upon my husband's return, I recounted the encounter, and together we resolved to sever ties with his mother, recognizing the toxicity of her behavior. Yet, despite our decisive action, 
Her words continue to linger in my mind, casting a shadow of doubt and guilt over me. It's challenging to shake the feeling that she holds me responsible for disrupting his life and harbors resentment towards me. Contrary to her narrow-minded perspective, I harbor no intention of resigning myself to a life as a permanent stay-at-home mom. My passion for architecture burns as fiercely as ever, and I eagerly await the opportunity to return to work and immerse myself in my profession once again. Furthermore, caring for our baby has proven to be far less daunting than she suggests. We have managed her needs with efficiency and grace, and I have even taken on freelance projects to stay engaged professionally, ensuring that my skills remain sharp and relevant. The supportive comments from others reaffirm what I already know that her viewpoint is distorted and her expectations are wildly unreasonable. It's abundantly clear that her remarks lack empathy and betray a fundamental misunderstanding of the complexities involved in raising a child within a partnership. Moving forward, we remain steadfast in our decision to prioritize our family's well-being and distance ourselves from her toxic influence, while continuing to nurture our relationship and pursue our individual ambitions. As the dynamics in our household are strained by my sister's journey through puberty, the atmosphere often feels tumultuous, akin to navigating a war zone. While conventional wisdom suggests embracing parenthood when one can fully savor its joys, I am immensely grateful to be relishing the experience with my daughter, especially while adhering to meticulously crafted plans for our future. It's reassuring to know that if my husband harbored any misgivings about our circumstances, he would undoubtedly articulate them and his decision to side with me against his mother underscores our solidarity. I want to clarify that my intent isn't to cast aspersions on any particular age group or parenting philosophy, rather, it's an acknowledgement that each person's journey is unique, and what works for one may not be suitable for another. I'm deeply appreciative of the diverse perspectives shared by everyone, and it's worth noting that my mother-in-law's behavior took a drastic turn following our decision to start a family. Turning to the recent altercation with my sister, it was born out of mounting frustration as she persistently pressured me to join her and her family. While I'm grateful for the support she extended during the two years I resided with her post-high school, the living arrangements were far from ideal. Not only was I burdened with exorbitant rent charges, far exceeding what was initially agreed upon, but I was also frequently called upon to care for my nieces and nephew at a moment's notice. This responsibility reached a tipping point when my sister and her husband absconded to New Orleans without prior notice, leaving me to juggle the care of multiple children, including their friends, for a duration of two days. The strain on my work obligations was considerable, and it prompted me to seek alternative accommodations promptly. While my current living situation may lack the comforts of a spacious abode, it provides me with a semblance of stability and autonomy, which I value immensely. Despite my sister's recent overtures to cohabit it once again, I approached the prospect with trepidation particularly in light of her plans to relocate to Washington with her husband in pursuit of better opportunities. This juncture underscores the importance of establishing boundaries and asserting one's autonomy, even within familial relationships, as we navigate the complexities of life's journey. Let me elaborate further on my perspective regarding the situation with my sister. Firstly, I want to emphasize my contentment with our current living situation in our small town. While I do entertain the idea of relocating at some point in the future, I strongly believe that any move should be undertaken on my own terms, aligning with my personal goals and aspirations. Despite my sister's persistent efforts to persuade me otherwise, I have consistently declined her invitations to move back in with her and her family. This decision stems from past experiences that have left me wary of repeating history. Living with my sister previously, while I was grateful for the roof over my head, I found myself in a situation where I lacked privacy, independence, and autonomy. Notably, I was expected to assume a significant caregiving role for her children, often at a moment's notice, while also contending with exorbitant rental charges that ate into the lion's share of my modest income. When confronted with her latest proposal, Suggesting that I occupy a separate apartment within their potential new home and pay rent, I couldn't help but feel a surge of frustration and resentment. It felt like a blatant attempt to coerce me into a situation that I had previously found untenable. Hence, I felt compelled to assert my boundaries firmly and unequivocally, informing her that I had no intention of revisiting the idea of cohabitation. 
While my sister may perceive her actions as gestures of familial solidarity and support, the reality is that they represent a blatant disregard for my autonomy and well-being. Despite her assertions to the contrary, it's evident to me that her motivations are rooted more in convenience and self-interest than genuine concern for my welfare. Furthermore, I'm disheartened by the apparent lack of understanding from my parents, who seem all too eager to dismiss my concerns and downplay the challenges I faced while living with my sister previously. Despite my best efforts to contribute financially and assist with household responsibilities, my contributions were often overlooked or taken for granted. As for my sister's sudden preoccupation with communal living arrangements, I suspect it may be driven by her desire for a live and caregiver who can shoulder both childcare responsibilities and financial burdens. While I remain hopeful that she has not persuaded my parents to endorse her plan, I cannot shake the feeling of frustration and disappointment at the prospect of being misunderstood and undervalued by those closest to me.